Many health challenges on the farm can be avoided with a proper herd health management program. During the third session of the 2022 Virtual Beef School held on Monday, March 21st, Dr. Justin Kiefer, clinical veterinarian for the Department of Animal Sciences at OSU, offered a beef herd health management update. Specifically, this is what Dr. Kiefer had to say about vaccinations for newborn and young calves. When we start at the beginning, we start at the calf here. Uh, I really avoid giving injectable vaccines. So those are the modified live or killed vaccines. That's the titanium, the express, the bovis shield, the cattle master, whatever you're using. Um, giving that to a newborn or a calf that's a week old or a month old, generally not a good idea. Uh, if we assume that mom here cleaning off the calf, she's been vaccinated. If we're a, a, a good herd that's been vaccinated or cows uh, once a year with a modified live, or twice a year with the killed virus, she's going to have IgG in her system uh, immune globulin or antibodies, she's going to give it to the calf at birth, okay? When the calf absorbs those maternal antibodies, so ideally that calf should get up, hopefully within an hour or two, um, have absorbed, uh, you know, several pints or a gallon or so of colostrum, which is awesome. They can absorb all that IgG. It's going to circulate throughout their body, okay? If I give an injectable vaccine at that point, days or, or weeks later, all those antibodies that are present in that calf system may counteract um, the vaccine antigens I'm objecting. So, um, the IDR or BRSV antigens may be counteracted by what the cow gave the calf. So that's why we just say avoid giving those injections uh, for, the most, for the most part before four months of age, okay? Also, DVD virus vaccines, the modified live ones I'm speaking of, while these are, are uh, modified, okay, these are DVD viruses that we've taken in a laboratory. Uh, the vaccine producers have taken the DVD took it through uh, 20 or 30 tissue passes where they basically take the DVD virus and grow it in rabbit's blood, do it 20 times, okay? The virus mutates a whole bunch of different ways, loses its ability to cause disease in cattle, great. We can inject that into a cow and we can get protection without causing the cow to get sick. However, when we give those DVD vaccines, it can cause some immune suppression, okay? That, that virus is, while modified, it's still alive. That's the last thing I wanna do to a little newborn calf is suppress its immune system, even if it's a small or short temporary immune suppression. They're new, they're young, they don't have experience in their world, their, their um, immune systems aren't so strong yet, so I don't want to immune suppress a calf. That's another reason why I don't want to give those uh, parenteral, intramuscular, or sub-Q vaccines to a young calf, okay? I'm gonna wait till those maternal antibodies are gone, three to four months of age before I start thinking about giving them injectables um, under the skin or in the muscle. Here's just a nice graph here. You know, in the, the left-hand side, we have grams of antibodies. So this is just basically IgG that they get from a cow, um, from colostrum or colostrum replacer if the cow doesn't have any, okay? We're gonna give colostrum four quarts ideally or a gallon. It's gonna be uh, ideally really high concentration for the first several weeks and it's gonna wane, okay? There's a point in time, there's that window of susceptibility. Here, I think it could, this graph could be extended out uh, much farther than eight weeks. We get some longer duration of passive immunity, but at some point, the passive immunity of the immune globulins that the calf got from mom are going to be degraded. They're going to be eliminated. And the calf's going to have to start making their own. That's where we're going to need to step in with our vaccines and give them. So it's not going to be a, a perfect scenario. We're not going to have high protection at all times, but we're going to get uh, hopefully good protection. We're going to get good colostrum from mom. And eventually we're going to come in with our vaccines three or four months later. Okay. What do I do recommend uh, for, the, for the newborn? So starting from the beginning, um, if we have issues uh, with newborn pneumonias, we have cattle that are going to be moved around at a young age. Uh, the intranasal vaccines, uh, Enforce 3, Nasogen are the two ones that I've used. They provide immediate protection from infection. These are what we call mucosal vaccines. So we're giving it in the nose, in the mucous membranes. This sets up a local immunity. It's not going to go through the rest of the body in general, although they do communicate. The body does have memory from mucosal vaccines systemically. You can find it in the regional lymph nodes here, like in the throat. You could actually find antigens for the vaccines you've given in the nose later. Uh, we've seen that through research. But again, it's a localized protection from infection for at least 90 days, okay? There's also some things that come along with these vaccines, not only the antigens, but also what's called interferon, which I spoke of earlier. That is really a nonspecific antiviral compound that can actually prevent uh, virus attachment um, and virus spread through the upper respiratory tract. So that not only do you have the vaccine antigens that you can make immediate IgA, which is the type of immune globulin we have in the nose, but you can have that other antiviral compound right in the nose. 
Um, in my experience, these products have been really beneficial in the face of viral pneumonia outbreaks. Just if we have it going through the calves or the cows, we just go ahead and hit everybody with intranasal vaccine. They're very safe. They're not going to be affected by the maternal antibodies at all, like what we're concerned about with the injectable vaccines. Um, if we're dealing with uh, early bacterial pneumonia in cats, uh, I would also look to see if those bacterial infections are being set up by something else, either some DVD creeping around or some, some clinical viral infections. But you can use the intranasal uh, once PMH has been helpful in my experience. Um, and then if we have E. coli outbreaks going on in our calves, um, we probably have to wait for the next year to vaccinate our cows and deliver it to the next batch of calves. But in the meantime, um, if we have outbreaks of E. coli in the first week of life, so those, those oral first defense bolus are pretty helpful uh, to prevent uh, further E. coli infections in the calves that aren't quite sick yet. So, you know, calf vaccination strategies. So core, you know, you can consider this uh, um, important if you're dealing with those early, early uh, viral issues in calves and intranasal vaccine at birth. Uh, I would say uh, just a few of our herds do this. Not all of our herds at OSU give uh, immediate vaccines at birth, but they're pretty helpful. Uh, these these uh, vaccines contain IVR, BRSV, and PI3. These intranasal vaccines do not contain DVD, which I would be worried about causing immune suppression. Um, then we're going to wait till they're three to four months of age, and we're going to give a modified live or killed pneumonia vaccine. So that's going to be our BRSV, DVD, our PI3, and an IVR, viral antigens, okay? A lot of times they're combined with an optional lepto five-way. You can find them without the lepto. Uh, we tend to just give them anyway with the lepospira. And then we start our clostridial vaccines at the same, same time, a clostridial seven-way. All those giving at the same time at three to four months of age. Okay. Once that calf has had that first dose, we need to wait. We can't come in uh, a week later or two weeks later. Okay? We need to come in at least three weeks because remember what I said uh, earlier in the presentation, we give shots or when you got your coronavirus vaccine, and I, and I hope you're vaccinated, you get your, your vaccine takes time for your immune system to take that antigen from the site underneath your skin or in your muscle, to take all that antigen, take it down to the lymph nodes uh, where your B cells, uh, which are some of your white blood cell populations are going to make antibodies to those antigens that have been injected into you. And the same is true for cattle. That process takes, like I said, 17 to 20 days. So it's around up to three weeks. Okay. It doesn't necessarily need to be at three weeks. It can be several weeks or two or three, four months later. We can stretch out that time and still get a nice booster response. But again, that booster is really important to give no matter you're going to give it as long as it's three weeks later. Um, we really should try to optimize giving those vaccines prior to weaning. Uh, sometimes it always doesn't work that way given logistics or when we're processing calves. And even in our own stations, we, we struggle with that sometimes. Sometimes we wean calves, they only had one dose and uh, that doesn't mean I'm very happy. Uh, but we're going to deal with it. We're going to give the second dose uh, after the calves have gone through the stress of weaning. But ideally, you want to give both doses before you pull them off mom. And then that means you've got two doses on board, got really good protection before they start falling and when you separate them out. Um, optional vaccines, you know, those first defense bullets for E. coli protection or intranasal vaccines uh, like the uh, once PMH at birth. Um, you could also consider the Pasteurella, Manheimia, Hermophilus vaccines. Again, not much data on how well those vaccines work. Also keep in mind, if you're giving one of these vaccines, these Pasteurella, Manheimia, Hermophilus, these are what we call gram negative. So they contain a compound called lipopolysaccharide, which is part of the bacterial surface. This is what makes animals that have gram negative infections like cows feel really bad. If you've ever seen a dairy cow with an E. coli, vaccine, or e. coli infection in her udder, they feel really terrible. Um, they wanna lay down and just die. Um, there is lipopolysaccharide in these gram negative vaccines that can make cows feel really bad. So if you're combining these, let's say if you're giving a Pasteurella vaccine and a Salmonella vaccine, keep in mind that stacking two gram negative vaccines uh, in one uh, shot that may, may make the cow feel really bad. So when you're designing or working with your vaccine protocols, talk to your vet on which antigen you should combine and how do we be careful that we're not getting too much um, of a negative uh, in, uh, impact on the cow's health, uh, especially with these gram negative bugs. And your vet should be able to help you figure that out. Um, I really avoid giving more than one gram negative vaccine at a time. 